So this is a topic that we're going to have a look at called systems of equations. So we're going to have a look at wee introduction. This is the first video. So we're going to have a look at a wee bit of an explanation about that and example one. And then we're going to go on and look at the idea of solving uh, three by three systems of equations. What does that mean and how do we solve them? And then in further examples, we'll look at this idea of redundancy and inconsistency. Uh, systems of equations, what are they? Um, well, systems of equations really are um, uh, equations where we have more than one variable, but also potentially more than one equation. And at this level, you may have come across systems of equations in dealing with uh, two equations and two unknowns. So if we have 2a plus 3b equals 5, a plus b equals 7, then you might have a strategy for solving those equations simultaneously. Effectively, that's a two by two system of equations because it has two equations and there are two unknowns. We can't solve uh, a system of equations if we have less equations than we have unknowns. So for instance, if we had an equation with four unknowns, we couldn't solve it with two equations. We would have to have at least four equations. There has to be as many equations as there are unknowns. So the system of equations, as the text says here, is defined by these two different things. How many equations it contains and how many variables or letters are in it. And as we were familiar with the idea of a part of a two by two system of equations. That's fine. The method that you probably have works well for that, but what happens when we start to get into larger territory? What happens when we're dealing with three unknowns and three equations? Does the system that we have of eliminating or substitution work for that? Not as well. Okay, We, we are going to use the similar ideas, but not using the exact same uh, method. So we're going to learn about a particular way of writing down the information we need for these. And just down at the bottom here, it's got the idea of what we're actually going to start to use, the idea of matrices. We've got a flexible method that we're going to use and it involves matrices. Now we're going to study matrices as a separate topic a wee bit later on, so I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail about the, the mechanics of matrices. We're going to jump straight into uh, the systems of equations. Suffice to say, a matrix, which is a single, a matrix is simply uh, a list of numbers which might uh, contain some information. That's a matrix. It has two rows and three columns. It has numbers or elements in each of these. That might be a matrix. You'll have come across a matrix before in terms of vector mathematics. Um, you might have used a column matrix to represent a vector. So you may well have used matrices before. You just didn't realize it. It's simply um, a list of numbers in a row or in a column, uh, or in a, a, an array like the, the first one there. Okay. How do matrices help us uh, solve systems of equations? Okay. Well, let's have a look at uh, the next note here. What we do here is that we're going to uh, have a look at a two by two system of equations just to start with. And the two equations are written there at the left hand side. What we want to do really is to take out of that, extract from that uh, system of equations, the key information. The key information in all of this is actually the numbers. The letters are irrelevant. And when computers are programmed to solve equations, um, they're not in, we don't include x or y. They don't solve it the way we do. What they do is they extract the numbers and they process the numbers and then they spit out the answer perhaps with the letters back in. But they're only interested in the numbers, and that's what we do with this system here. So we think about two separate matrices uh, together, and the, we've got AX, A is a matrix, and X and equals B. Now, A is the number matrix, the coefficient matrix, and if you notice, 1, 4, 2, 6, they are the coefficients of all the uh, X's and Y's here. Okay, 
Uh, we've then got our x, y matrix, which basically disappears when we're doing this. And then the other matrix, the matrix B, is the answers, or the, in other words, the constant matrices here. So we're really interested in two of the three matrices. We're interested in matrix A and in matrix B, because that's got the actual numbers that we're going to work with. And in actual fact, we put them together into one augmented matrix. Okay. In other words, we can, because we're going to work with both sets of numbers anyway, we basically might as well put them together and we combine them. And we separate the, the rather than putting two separate brackets, we just put a wee dotted line to divide the matrices up. And you might be thinking, that just looks like the equations uh, without equal signs and without x's and y's. And you'd be absolutely right. It still is written in almost exactly the same format. Okay? But we just don't have the clutter of the letters and the equal sign. We've just extracted the numbers. Okay? So far, so good. So let's look at uh, what we can do to actually solve uh, a problem. In order to solve a matrix problem, we need to identify two things. And the first thing I'm going to do is actually look at the bottom part of the screen because we need to understand something about what we call elementary row operations. Now, we know something about elementary row operations because if you've solved equations simultaneously before, you've already used them. So, for instance, if I were to write down 3x plus y equals 7 and 2x plus 2y equals 6, then your strategy would probably be to multiply one or both of the equations together, first of all. So, say, in order to get these y terms the same and opposite signs, I'll multiply the first equation by negative 2. So you would think about doing that, and then what you would do, you would add the two equations together, and you would create underneath a sum, which is a, a third equation, which would be, hopefully, one of the variables missing. So we know already that we can multiply uh, an equation. That's okay. And we know that we can add equations together. So let's look at these three elementary row operations. And you'll notice that the second and the third of these uh, operations is exactly the same. So the second one says a row can be multiplied by a constant, which is exactly what we were doing down here. And the third one says that a row can be changed by adding a multiple of another row. In other words, we can add rows together, which we uh, can already do. So most of it is the same as our simultaneous equations. There is this extra uh, rule that we can use, which is that we can actually swap the rows about. It doesn't matter which one we write first. In actual fact, one of the wee tricks is you write down the first equation that's got the smallest um, value in the first column. So we want to get the smallest number at the top left-hand corner. Basically, so we arrange the matrices in order. You don't need to, but it certainly helps. Okay. And the last thing before we start, just go back up to the top here. The plan of using matrices, we want to use these elementary row operations. And we want to create what is called in the matrix world an upper triangular matrix. And if you look at both of these arrangements of numbers, forget about the right-hand column, that's the other constant matrix. But if you notice in these yellow uh, areas I've drawn, they, they make the shape of a right angle triangle. The other terms in the matrix are zero. A, B, C, you know, all the other ones, th there could be zeros in amongst the other ones, but we've got uh, other values. But for sure, the ones in the bottom left hand side have to be zero. We call these upper triangular matrices, and that's what we're aiming to get. Okay, once we've got that, I'll show you what we do next. So lots of stuff to kind of think about, lots of wee bits of theory. You can go back and uh, view that again after maybe you've had a look at this equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an example just with a two-by-two two system. I'm going to introduce you to the idea of using an, an augmented matrix. 
and the elementary row operations. So here we have example one. We've got two uh, equations to solve. We've got two equations, two unknowns, two by two system of equations. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down these two equations in an augmented matrix. So I'm interested in creating a matrix with the, just the, the numbers in uh, the rows instead of the letters as well. Now the first elementary row operation rule was that if you have a look at the, the numbers here, 3x and 1x, I want that 1 in the top row. I want the 1 is smaller than 3, so I want that 1 there. Which means that with the 1 goes the 6 for the y term and then another 1. So that's me got my uh, matrix numbers in here from that equation. In the second row, I'm going to write 3, negative 2 and negative 7. It can be done the other way around, but I find that if you can arrange it that way, sometimes it makes it easier. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is to apply any other row operations. Now, we nominally call each of these rows row 1, row 2, and so on. And you're going to write down, as you use them, any uh, multiplications that you're going to do. So the, the only thing, because it's a 2 by 2 matrix, the only thing we need to do to change this matrix is to make a, an upper triangular matrix, that 3 has to become 0. And then we've got our uh, upper triangular matrix there. Okay, so we just need that 3 to become a 0. So what we need to do is we need to effectively do the elimination process that we would do from simultaneous equations. We need to look at the two numbers in that first column and think, how can I make a 0 uh, in that place. What can I do with row 1 and row 2 to make a 0? So, let's have a look at where our matrix is going. I want to keep matrix 1. Uh, so I need to make row 1 as it is. And instead of this 3, I want a number here. How do I make 0 from 1 and 3? What I'm going to do is I'm going to write down 3 times row 1, which will give me 3, subtract 1 law of row 2. Remember, there's row 1 and there's row 2. So if I do 3 lots of 1, take away 3, that's going to give me a 0, which is exactly what I need. But I have to do the same thing for every column, effectively. So I have to do the same for this lot. So I do uh, 3 times 6 is 18, minus negative 2, 18, minus negative 2 is 20. So this element here is going to be 20. Then I do the same for the constants matrix. I do 3 times 1 is 3. Subtract negative 7, another double negative here, and that becomes 10. Write down the 3R1 minus R2 because you'll forget and you'll get it wrong. So always refer to that. Because we have an upper triangular matrix, we're ready to actually extract the answer. Because remember that this dotted line is instead of an equal sign. So we're really saying that the second letter, which is Y, we're basically saying, therefore, or so, 20 Y equals 10. We're basically putting the, the, the skin around the bones again. Where we're saying we missed out the X and Y, and now we're putting it back in. So 20 Y equals 10. Therefore, Y is 10 divided by 20 y equals a half. So that's us used the row 2 in order to get the value of y and we can substitute that back in. Substitute y equals a half into the first row which has a 161 means 1x plus 6y equals 1. We know that 6y is going to have the value of 3. y is a half, 6y is 3 equals 1, subtract uh, 3 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 2. So our solution, we usually write it in the terms of a coordinate, um, unless you're told otherwise, x first, negative 2, a half. That's the solution to our system 
of equations. Okay, so we've used um, a augmented matrix. We've used our row operations to get this kind of ultimate goal of uh, an upper triangular matrix. And from there, we've extracted the information we needed to get a solution. The next example we'll do will be a three by three matrix. That's the kind of biggie. We're going to use all these rules, so just make sure you understand the basics of it and dial up uh, example two, and we'll, I'll take you through how to solve a three by three system of equations using matrices.